be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. And first to enter will be Reggie Johnson. You see behind him the man who has taken over the training chores for this fight, Don Turner. Well known as trainer to both Evander Holyfield and Michael Grant in the heavyweight division. Reggie Johnson turned his career around with the stunning one-punch right hook knockout of William Guthrie last year that earned him a light heavyweight title. Can you turn that music up for him, man? Yeah! Get up, boys, in the house! What's up? Reggie Johnson in the house? This is all about anybody and everybody. Johnson in, Turner following him in. And the record for Reggie Johnson, 39 wins, five losses, one draw. Two of those losses, incidentally, were close, tough decision losses in Argentina to Argentine Jorge Castro. Even Roy Jones says, no way Reggie was going to win one of those fights. <laughs> Elmo Adolf with a little early instruction to Johnson as Roy Jones prepares to come in. The name of Roy's walkout music is Drop Bombs, which is the flip side of his own new single, I Pray, to be released later this month. Jones's record, the one loss, a disqualification against Montel Griffin, immediately avenged via a first round knockout. 33 KOs and 39 fights, 13 and 1, 9 KOs and title fights, and you saw the statistic, almost incredible, that shows that Jones is about to defend his title against a southpaw for the fourth consecutive time. While you're watching this fight, you can log on to www.hbo.com slash boxing to chat and score each round of tonight's action. You can also voice your opinion on the poll question for the night. If Roy Jones wins, should he move up to the heavyweight division and campaign there? Give us a yes or no, and we'll provide you with the results of that poll later on. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Murad Muhammad's m and Sports in association with Jordan Brand, Cedric Kushner Promotions, Square Ring, and the Grand Casino present 12 rounds of boxing for the unified IBF, WBA, WBC, Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Mississippi State Athletic Commission, Chairman Billy Lyons, Commissioner Fred Angelis, Chief Deputy Commissioner Sal Toronto, Physicians at Ringside, Dr. Lance Barnes, Dr. Todd Cothern, Timekeeper at the Bell, Denver Anderson, Counting for the Knockdown Seconds, Wayne Primu. From the Grand Casino, ladies and gentlemen, pardon me, your three judges assigned here at ringside, scoring the bout on a 10-point must system, will be from California, Chuck Hassett. From Venezuela, Cova Jesus. And from Mississippi, Paul Sita. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Elmo Adolf. And now, from the Grand Casino of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. 
ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with blue and weighing 171 pounds. As an amateur, he accumulated nearly 100 victories, and now, as a professional, he is a two-time world title holder with 39 victories, 24 by knockout, with five losses and a draw. He comes to this ring wearing one championship belt and plans to leave wearing three. Ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, here is the former middleweight world champion and reigning defending IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, Reggie Sweet Johnson. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, trimmed with red, he weighs 174 pounds. In 1988, he was a silver medalist while deserving Olympic gold. Now, as a professional, he has a record consisting of 39 victories, including 33 knockouts, with only one loss, disputed and avenged. And he has captured four world titles in three divisions, while most experts recognize him as pound for pound, the best there is. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, presenting the four-time world champion, the reigning and defending WBA, WBC, light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Eight years ago, Reggie Johnson was briefly brought to Pensacola, Florida, and trained in the gym for a period of time, about six or eight weeks, with Roy Jones's dad, Roy Jones Sr., who was still training his son at that time. Roy Jones Sr. asked Roy to get in the ring and spar with Reggie Johnson. And Roy, after a brief period of time doing so, stepped away and said, this is nonsense. If I'm gonna be measured, I shouldn't be measured against a guy I'm someday gonna fight for a title. Jones was right. He knew that their path would eventually cross. Reggie has gotta make sure he jump on Roy and get ahead on points. Stay ahead on points. You a challenger, you're supposed to be motivated to get that title. Roy Jones' job is to make certain that he doesn't give this guy too much courage because once he starts landing one shot at a time, then he's, he's going to fall right into Reggie's trap. The expectation is that Jones would choose to box and be safe. Even his good friend Derek Smoke Gaynor said to us yesterday, I want him to box. This should be an easy fight. But Roy Jones said to us, well, don't necessarily count on it. I might decide to go ahead and confront him man-to-man -man in the first round because I think he wants it that way. He's already starting to go Reggie's way. Roy lands one shot, and it turns into a clinch. Reggie gets in two or three before all of that happens. Reggie getting in the little pops to the body as you saw them in that last clinch. One minute down, hard right hand by Jones, and Johnson goes straight on to the seat of his pants. There's the quickness and the power of Roy Jones. That's the quickness and the power. But you got a long night. You don't want to be doing it with one shot. Another right hand lead lands on Johnson. And Johnson trying to fight back. Apparently wanting to communicate right away to Jones. That was a flash knockdown. You didn't hurt me that badly. That punch hurt. Now Reggie, this is all new to Reggie now. He's into another category. Jones told us that he felt the straight right hand would be the dominant punch in his arsenal. Already the returns are in. 
one thing you want to do is reg his corner. You got to let them know where Roy, Roy Jones's power range is. You got to keep your hands set. Two weeks ago, Oscar De Hoya knocked Obacar down in the first round, and it looked for a moment as though it would be an easy fight. But ten rounds later, De Hoya was still fighting before he earned his TKO of Obacar. Another quick right hand by Jones. Now, Reg is going to have to set his defense, find out where that shot hurt me, and put his hand right there in that position. And a cut above the right eye of Reggie Johnson. Little cut just at the corner of the right eye. He was cut in the, in the 12th round of the Will Taylor fight over the right eye. That was back in February. Now, four months later, the cut emerges again in the same place. All of that flash knockdown happened. Reg is sticking strength with the same strategy, throwing four or five shots. Roy Jones, you don't want him throwing shots. You want him defending himself at all times. Great right hand lands for Reggie Johnson. Obviously, his plan was to go to the body. But there's a knockdown. There's blood. There's a highly energetic Roy Jones. There's a wildly enthusiastic crowd. And already, Reggie Johnson is in an uphill fight. Get that blood off him, man. Get that blood off his chest. a look at the knockdown from three angles as you look at the CompuBox numbers that showed Roy Jones fighting economically but effectively. And there's the straight right hand. Right on top of the eye. And you know, if the guy's throwing one shot, here we go again. Mm. And you don't even think it hurts when you punch it with that kind of power. It happens so quickly. It takes a moment for you before your legs tell you, hey, you're down. So the knockdown and the cut came from the same punch. I believe it's in the same area. Look that way. All of Roy Jones's 12 punch connects in the first round were power shots. I don't think he'll throw too many jabs against a southpaw. And you heard Don Turner telling Reggie Johnson, get inside and don't give him any time to work. And Reggie Johnson is listening. You want to get inside and, and land as many punches as you can so that you can make Roy Jones start Jones following you around, landing one shot at a time. Looking at Jones in his battles against Mike McCallum, Montel Griffin, and a couple of others, Lou Duval in particular, Reggie Johnson's people, Don Turner most particularly, felt as though if you back Roy up against the ropes, he's not effective. But he's certainly awfully effective when he stands in the middle of the ring like this. All right, let's go. Get out. Break it clean. Step back. Think about this Roy Jones. He's so conditioned. It takes a lot of energy to throw that many power shots. And Reg is having a difficult time trying to decide which defense is he going to use. Speed. Speed is the great equalizer in so many sports. And speed is the difference so far between Jones and Johnson. It doesn't matter who you're fighting. You have a defense. You set your defense. You don't move your hands back and forward. You just sit where the guy's going to hit you. Johnson getting to the body. Jones backs up. cut by Jones. Have you noticed Reggie's hands were right in the right spot that time? Keep him up. Now he blocks a right hand with his left glove, does Reggie Johnson, and fires a right to Jones' chest. Backs Jones up into the ropes as he goes to Roy's body. Back up, A lot of times you think you have to move your hands back and forward, but just setting your defense, you're out of trouble. Keep your hands up at all times. Jim Lampley and George Foreman live at ringside in Biloxi, Mississippi. Larry Merchant not with us tonight. Home in California for his daughter Julie's graduation from high school. And Jones, having already knocked Reggie Johnson down once in the first round, looks for another one in the second. Roy Jones is awful courageous. Now he's throwing combinations, which he should have always been doing. Roy Jones, throw your combinations. Although you're powerful, use the one, two, three. Jones digging up and 
Honda with the right hand. And again, this is the 10 second warning, not the end of the round. Elmo Adolf has to let the fighters know that that's not the end of the round. That's the bell that ends the round. Confusing. Way to play off the jab. That's good. That's both three working, baby. Okay. That's both three working off the jab. I got you. I got you. Okay. Pull the cup out. Okay. Get that blood off the chest, man. All right. Way to go. Way to follow the jab up. You going to be following that jab right back? If you get close, you want to run? Make him run. You got to get close. Cut down it. Ain't nothing we can't handle. Oh, relax. If Elmo Adolf has an expressed an opinion to officials at ringside as to whether that cut was the product of a butt or a punch, we're not sure. And we showed you the punch in the first round that could have caused the cut. There's head contact, which also could have caused the cut. So we're not sure which was the instance in which Reggie Johnson's right eye got sliced open. Now we go to round three. And whenever Lloyd Jones spreads his leg any length of a way, he's trying to get in a power shot. And I think Reggie's corner should be advising him not allow this guy to spread his leg. How do you stop it? Well, what you do is just stay close, real close to him. Make him back up everything after he backs up. Pretty sure Don Turner would want Reggie Johnson to crowd Jones a lot more than he's doing. When he spreads his legs, he can also just kind of move back a little bit and make him bring his feet together again. We're told, incidentally, that Johnson's corner firmly believes that the cut over Reggie's right eye was from the butt, not from the punch in round one. Of course, it's in their best interest to believe that. with a looping left hand and now digging to Jones's body. Jones backs him up with a right. Now when he backs his legs up, move back a little bit and make him start all over again. This is what Reggie has to do. Right, hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Don't push him in, right? Don't push him in, right? Roy Jones doesn't like using his left jab, so he uses everything with his feet. Spreads them apart. Does Roy drop his left hand so low because he wants you to fire the right so you counter over it? He spreads himself because he doesn't use a jab. He's looking for the same thing that you could create with a left, a right jab, a left jab. Good punch combination by like Jones. Too much speed for Johnson to handle. More lead right hands. Reggie Johnson backing up against the ropes and not throwing. Blinded by Jones's speed. Jones is pretty, Roy Jones is pretty clever. He knows all this is created in the middle of the ring, so he's not going to throw everything while this guy's on the rope. Try to pull him back out to the middle of the ring and do what you did originally. of the sport been a 175 pound fighter with the kind of hand speed that Roy Jones has he's gifted he started off in a lighter weight room just like one of those jet pilots speed moved up with him and you see what happened that hurt Whoa. Six, seven, Reggie Johnson has never been knocked out and now round three comes to a close or did it Gets a chance to spread his feet. Boom. Straight right hand right on the button. And it bent his knees. You don't allow him to spread his legs. Once again, he's got it. Happens so quickly that you just can't duck. 
Second knockdown in three rounds. Second time Johnson's been knocked down by a quick straight right hand. This one's set up by a left. The one in the first round was a single punch knockdown. Seldom you see guys with that kind of speed, accuracy, and then have the power to go along with it. You just don't see it much. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through the first three? Yeah, three and nothing, 30 to 25, Roy Jones Jr. You certainly have to give him an extra point in round one. You got to give him an extra point in round three. Personally, I thought they should have sent in a doctor with a quarter at the end of the third round to look at Reggie Johnson. There was no doctor in there. I tell you, I still think Reggie Johnson's coming up for the fourth round hurt. But this is all Roy Jones. Look at that. Yep, we could see a finish here. Well called, Harold as Reggie Johnson has no legs, or at least is diminished, beginning round four. Well, one thing about this, Reggie is one of the best fighters in this weight class ever. Can't even know, he doesn't even know what to do. Roy Jones is there and beyond. Yep, Johnson looking hesitant and confused as he trained hard, had a good plan, was mentally focused and prepared and has simply been dazzled by Jones's overwhelming physical gifts. Seldom you see a guy get to this stage as Roy Jones has and continuously gets into the ring in shape. Roy fir firing to the body that time. Jones has become increasingly fond of body punches in the past four or five fights. Very proud last year when he knocked Virgil Hill out with a body shot here. So that's, that goes to show you, he's holding something back right now. Hasn't been able to get in a good body shot. That ever happened, my goodness. <laughs> you just cannot drop your hands when you're boxing Roy Jones. They have to be up. You ducking, cover your face. George, I know you're a, you're a big Oscar De La Hoya fan. You have a lot of admiration for Trinidad and uh, Prince Nassim and various other fighters in the sport. Is Roy your pound for pound number one? I've never seen anything like this. Roy Jones reminds me of a little more Hamal Ali, uh, stinging hook with Joe Frazier. He's everything you'd want to see in a fighter, and you're not going to see that much. I can't tell you that about the other guys. The they reflexes, are great. The reflexes of a Ray Leonard or a Ray Robinson. Anything you want, he has it. I mean, he got body punching power. So it's been all Roy Jones for the first four rounds. And like Oscar De La Hoya, he has courage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sensational uppercut. Snapped Johnson's head back. And Roy beginning to clown just a little bit for the audience here. You can't play with Reggie, though. You can't play with him. Roy even looks away to try to tempt Reggie to come off the ropes. And dances with Elmo Adolf for further entertainment. Copy box numbers reflecting Jones's overwhelming dominance against a guy who was regarded as one of his toughest opponents ever. Here's the uppercut, George. There you are, and that's something you don't expect Roy Jones to do. You have to keep your hands in position at all times. Seated at ringside, Reggie Johnson's mother, Norma Johnson, remembering now why all those years ago she wasn't sure she wanted her son to box. <laughs> well, this is the time. This is what it's all about. You can't win them all. Let's get all this ice out of here. Let's keep this. All right, ice and moisture in Johnson's corner. Give it a I wonder if Reggie's handlers thought maybe they could concoct a little delay here. Does nothing but help Reggie. That's right. Let's go, fellas. He's definitely the beneficiary. Hi. Now they start round five of a scheduled 12. Now, Reggie, when you can't do any, anything else, go back to your basics. Use your left jab, faint, come in with a, a right, I mean, your right jab, faint, come in with a little right hook every now and then, box. Nothing else is working. The basics all 
always you can call on your bases. The problem, of course, is what's coming back. Hello, you can the basics. He stepped out of the basics, reaching out for hard shots with uh, Roy Jones a little early on, throwing combinations up without understanding what he's doing. But now he can go back to the basics. He's been a boxer for many years. If you throw a, a right jab, a left jab, right jab in this point, at Roy Jones Jr., you're not going to miss him. You take the power off of it, you're going to get him. Jones landing three punches. Johnson manages to connect with a right. Once again, he drops his right hand. Drops his right hand. You can't do that. Your defense has to be set because this guy is so quick, you can't depend on your, your reflexes. Boys just looking for another opening for that straight right hand lead. Fires it there. Reggie stepping back just to counter one time. Looking for one good counter straight left hand. That time Jones stepping into the right hand and Johnson hugging him up, hugging him up. Stop the momentum. Still looking for one shot, Reggie. Roy's got his legs spread, so he's, he's intending to land a hard shot. Well, it's a, an almost insurmountable task facing Johnson now because he's bound to be four, five, six points down on the scorecards. He uh, hasn't had a knockout past the fifth round since 1993. And... Uh, He's going against a guy who is overwhelming him and swamping him with punching accuracy and activity. And putting on a show. He would have to go back to the basics, try to break Roy down to the body, the and base. set him up for something in the late round. Right jab, you double up on your jab, you go to the body, you faint. It's the auto self-defense. This is the time to defend yourself. He's not doing any of that. You see, boxing was invented so that the smaller guy, the frailer guy, can have an advantage with the skill. Use your skill. saw the one punch fight, Johnson man. landed. It was that fight. winging you right hand around the top. Man. The guy's quick. You can see that, right? You got to nullify his speed, man. You got to crowd him and throw punches and make him back up. You letting him be the aggressor. Come on, man. Come on. Right Hot shot him and then move out. Don't right. stay there. Stay the way. They're going to make a mistake. They're going to catch him clean. Kid Gavilan invented the bolo punch. Second. Kid Gavilan landed it a little harder than that a lot of times. Well, sometimes when you're not doing what you want to do, you just get the crowd involved by doing funny things. This is sometimes still the circus. You know? Roy, conscious of the fact that there are fans here who may not have seen Kid Gavilan in his prime, just wanted to show him a little glimpse. Oh, there's a lot of water falling off of Roy Jones. This ring can become very slippery. So where's the Reggie Johnson right hook that KO'd William Guthrie when Guthrie came at him? Roy Jones has a little height advantage when he spreads his legs apart. When he's jumping too much, he gets out of the way. And now a fusillade of punches by Jones. Pop, pop, pop. Johnson ducking and slipping, fires a right hand. Now he's allowing Johnson to step back on his uh, left foot. There you go. He brings him back into the middle of the ring. This is where he's, uh, he's got the advantage. Reggie touches him on the shoulder with his right hand every now and then just to know where he is. One element of the Jones plan, he has completely fulfilled here told us that he would try in every round for 
remind Johnson who the man is. He wanted psychological domination. He's had it ever since round one. And you heard Don Turner between rounds pleading with his fighter to be more aggressive. There you go, a good right hook that by Johnson.